And welcome back to Home Track Heroes here on CW11 as we're flashing back to the Hornet B main event as we see Kenny Spear going off track and well it just looks like a normal off track incident it was actually pretty funny to watch because here he took out one of our cameras as he's going to come off the corner a little hot and doink there goes the camera and Ugh. I think he just really wanted the cone that it was on because he took that with him for us to race. Uh, Kenny we'll send you the bill buddy sorry about that that's uh, that's not going to be good against the race winnings account. Yeah, that's how at I, all. That, that cone must have been pretty hot after dragging on that pavement for a few laps. Cone but aside. We were actually under caution in the Hornet A main event right here as we had a car go off track. Lucas Haas and plucking the 03 off the nose of Burt Myers as he's going to come to a nice stop. Not, no parking there. Sorry. Nope. Sorry. So here, let's, let's get another look at it. Oh, yeah, into the corner, little wiggly, and off to check out the grass, which has seen much greener days. <laughs> Getting a little bit of dust as we're going to go one to go. Six laps remain here in the Interstate Battery. Hornet A main event. It's Bobby Fisher leading, but he is oh, cursed once again, again with a late race wow. caution. Wow. Poor Bobby Fisher. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yes, that the insurmountable lead is extremely surmountable now as they will uh, turn the lights off and get ready to go back to action. He's going to have a car right next to him but here on the restart. The car next to him is his daughter, Scarlett Fisher, who is a lap down, lap car staying in the, the in the restart. So father, daughter on the front row, brother, sister on the back row who we are riding along with right now. That is McKenna Cox, top left, Dawson Cox in the bottom right. Six laps remain, and let's see how this one shakes out. If this was my sister, I'd put her in the fence. I'm just saying. <laughs> Dawson's not mean like me, but I'm just saying. As we are underway. Well, oh, well, I think he spoke too soon. <laughs> yep. As that is Gardner sticking his nose in between the two Cox siblings. Gonna try to go three wide. And was that Trent Gillespie who got on the inside of all three of them? Where did Trent Gillespie come from? He's like a magician. Is this the magic show? Uh, apparently, because Gillespie was, I think, three or four rows back and off the first lap. He is going to be into second place as we see Dawson Cox hanging it way out wide. Wow. As he was a big loser and all that. Yeah, but look at the car speed that he carried trying to come in through there. He's trying to make up all those spots back in one fell swoop with a car going around on the inside of two. Oh, it's a mess. Yeah, I think that was Snyder in the 15 who got the worst end of that deal. As you see the 15 going slow down the back straightaway again, passed by about everyone on track. As, uh, he's just not going to turn. It looks like a lot of left front damage to that car. Ooh, Someone yeah. off the suspension there. He's throwing the boat anchor out and will come to a stop and right about the same place that uh, Hausenflug did. Yeah, this looks a little familiar. As we're not quite under caution yet. We'll see if Snyder's able to get it fired back up as the cars haven't quite reached to him. He's rolling, so we're going to try to stay green and finish this one out. Bouncing like a pogo stick coming he, through the grass. He's able to take that hard right-hander in the pits as we have three laps to remain now. Bobby Fisher trying to get away from oh. the very fast Trent Gillespie. Oh, Bobby, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm feeling bad for him already. Gillespie's coming. I mean, Gillespie started, what, all the way back in 16th on this one, and he's got a, a sniff at it with three to go? Yeah, and uh -oh. a great battle for third place. The final spot on the podium behind them, the two young kids, McKenna Cox and Peyton Hop, trying to get on the podium. So we'll see how that battle shakes out as Gillespie has ran down Bobby Fisher quite a lot in that last lap, and he's right there now. Oh, and he's got the opening. Look at it. He's going to sneak low off a of two, back straight away. Door panel, the door panel. You got a new leader. Bobby Fisher running him down as much as he could, doing down the back straightaway, trying to kill all that momentum, give him a poor angle into the corner. But it looks like Gillespie's able to hang on, but a ton of speed from Fisher on the outside. We'll see how nice he plays as they go into the hairpin. Oh, Fisher got it back at least for a second, but that's going to be a really wide exit to two. That might bite him. Yeah, a little bit of the nose from Gillespie sent the 81 of Fisher up track as they're coming around three and four for the final time. Can Fisher get to the back bumper? Doesn't look like it. Gillespie's going to hang on oh. and win off a final restart. Going four wide into the corner. Bobby Fisher gets bitten by a late caution once again as McKenna Cox was able to hold off Peyton Hop for the final spot on the podium. As, That's oh, a brutal beating for Fisher once again. Break. As much as we feel bad for mm. Fisher, 
What a drive by Gillespie. Mm -hmm. 16th to the lead and one massive restart does the trick for him. Nice run, Trent. Yeah, sticking it four wide is hard to do. Yes, they're in the Hornets. They're a little bit smaller body cars, not as much horsepower. So it's, it might be a little bit easier to tax in the Hornets, but it was impressive nonetheless. Hey, he made her handle. So we'll go from the Hornets to some cars that can handle, and they go right and left all the time. It is time for the Super Stock Figure 8. And this division is brought to you by Monroe Grocery Outlet. Monroe Grocery Outlet's your locally owned neighborhood grocery store they offer name brand products fresh produce organics wine and more at 40 to 70 percent less than traditional grocery stores shop them first and save monroe grocery outlet the proud sponsor of our super stock figure eight class and it was a heavy night for the super stock figure eights and really all the figure eight divisions this past weekend is uh they had lost one of their drivers due to a heart attack uh it was very out of nowhere no one really saw it coming eric allison who tragically passed away a few weeks ago so all the drivers showing their tribute right here with a double check flag memorial lap uh, we got a big night in plan for eric allison later on throughout the year so stay tuned for all the information on that on evergreen social media as it was definitely a heavy-hearted night for all the figure eight drivers yeah eric was uh, on our podium last time that we had a home track hero show with super stock figure eight divisions so um godspeed eric as we're going to get into the starting lineup now for the Monroe Grocery Outlet figure eight cars. On the front row, we got the 72 of Jeff Talbert and sponsored by Pilchuck Heating. And to his outside, the 45, Jacob Renicky. Outlaw Mike Stiltz back in the class. Inside row number two in the Hot Rod Inc. number 36. It's the Jess Mobile. Jessica Wilson Wilkinson sponsors Wanted on her JE55. Row number three, the 11 of Keith Cook. Uh, sponsored by Masters of Cree, and to his outside, the 007 Jim Powers, sponsored by Rich's Car Corner. Fourth row is the showman, Steve Cox, the Cox Wheels Racing, number 32. Next to him, Andrew Shukar, the B&R Drywall 11X. And 19 of Harrison Hardwick back out here in the Superstock Figure 8 division. And then the one arm bandit, the 17 Quentin Borson, sponsored by Mrs. Turner's Hometown Cafe Puyallup. It is Mackenzie Dietz on the inside of the next row from BECU. And then we have got supposedly the 13 mystery driver, although do, do I see the 13 well, mystery driver out there? So I, I don't. Here's what happened. The 13 cars out there, which was Dawson Cox, but right until they went green, Mackenzie Dietz is now in that car because her car went fire. Oh. And so Dawson graciously stepped out and allowed McKenzie to run for points in the 13 car. Oh. So 67 is not out there, but McKenzie Dietz is in the 13 red car at the tail end of the field as the green flag is out. And Jeff Talbert with a great jump as we get the amazing view. You see Jim Powers there again sideways. Moon Man FPV on Instagram. Check him out as we got a little bit of carnage up front. Jessica Wilkinson hopping tires. Oh, no. Quickly off the uh, run is Wilkinson and up by the front straightaway. Whoa, what a cool angle the drone is here here showing you how they exit the one turn set up for the next one and how hard these cars can be to handle as they go right left right left yeah and it really shows how fast they are going i think that's probably the best angle of really the raw speed these cars have as that's a lot of bumper there and he's going to go around jeff talbert getting spun by mike stelts is just a little too much bumper going into the south corner as that is possibly going to bring a black flag for Stelz on the 36. Well, as, we'll, we'll see here. Yep. I'll tell you what, having seen uh, Mike race dirt modified over the last couple of years, there's, there isn't a uh, bumper he doesn't like. So <laughs> unfortunately, he's now a fan of the black flag. Yeah, so a stop and go penalty for him. But the caution flag is out as Talbert wasn't quite all the way turned around. So we're going to bring it back up to the booth, let them get reset, put Mike at the back of the field and try it again. Yeah, hey, just a little penalty. All right, go to the back. Try again, Mike. He'll get back to her, though. That's all right. Yeah, the caution flag probably helped him there actually because uh, normally if you get the black flag in race you have to stop and go it's a stop right. and go penalty and in that time the leaders can really check out from you but here he gets to reset the end of the field so not the worst penalty he could have had but uh, a little bit a little bit of fortune break there for the 36 gives you a chance to stay in the race and, and progress up the field on the lead lap still so he has got a chip in a chair to mix my poker terms as uh, we've got great flag action coming back yep about 27 laps remaining here keith cook up front uh, Quentin Boris and Steve Cox. That's a very, very tough back row. <laughs> oh, geez. How, how many times have we yeah. seen Borison and Cox side by side, nose to tail, over the course of our program here on Home Track Heroes on the CW11? Cook's going to lead. Cox is going to be the man trying to chase him. Borison trying to settle into third. And is that Stelts all the way up to fourth already? Yeah, he's back up there. Wow. <laughs> As that that's Mackenzie Dietz in the 13 car, the borrowed car, charging her way forward. And that's got to be very tough uh, to get from 
familiar with a new seat right away. Uh, she did not have any laps in this car prior to the green flag. Well, that's just the thing. It's not just a new car, which might handle different, steer different, accelerate different, but it is physically a new seat, as you cannot swap the seats out in these things fast enough to put your seat in and go to another. Now, Dawson is all of 5'8", uh, 110 pounds soaking <laughs> wet. Little small guy, right? And McKenzie uh, is not as small as Dawson, so that might be a, a tight fit in there, and who knows how uncomfortable she is in the cockpit of that car. Yeah, and also just trying to, like you said, trying to learn how a new car drives as well. There goes shoe car around right behind her, so maybe maybe she's a little bit better off than he is in the in the new car. Well, hey, we, we've seen Mackenzie do some good things in the division, and pretty impressive run that she's just in fifth again with a car she just jumped into right in front of the race with all those factors working against her. Talk about a calm, cool, and collected Keith Cook out in front. He has got, I think, about a complete bumper full of Steve Cox every corner so far. Uh, so far, there's a lot <laughs> of time left to uh, get more bumper if need be. Although, I'll tell you what, Keith, we talked about it the last time he was out, has completely rebuilt the rear of this car, the rear suspension on it, uh, about three weeks ago or so. And he's really showing how well he has adapted to the driving style that that new style suspension in the rear has given. He's got the point. He's not giving her up. He's just making perfect laps here so far. Yeah, if you look at the 32 of Cox, he's hanging the, the tail end out a lot more each corner than Keith Cook is. As, as I say that, uh, Cox has a smooth corner, mm -hmm. but you see, you'll see the 32 hang the rear end out, and now the 11 hangs the rear end out. So I'm just going to stop talking because obviously I they're not going to listen to me, but the rear end of Keith Cook seems to be very settled in in most of the corners. Right. Here in the pavement, you want to keep all four tires underneath you pointing the same direction as much as you possibly can to maximize your forward drive when you have the back end coming out like that the term is scrubbing speed mm -hmm. and scrubbing speed is bad i mean you have to maximize your miles per hour in this division where you're turning as much as you are the straighter you can keep the race car the better because that keeps you from scrubbing even more speed through the corners so Keith has probably looked in the rearview mirror for most of the race, but now he's got a little bit of intersection action as the 45 Renicky is going to come to a stop and stall out in the intersection, which could bring a caution flag out early. And there it goes. It does. So caution flag out as the 45 gets refired right away. But we're going to take a fast forward into the final six laps now. Uh, due to time, we're going to jump to the end of this race. Six laps remain. Keith Cook, Quinn Borzen, Steve Cox with Dietz and Stelz in row number two or row number three That's a so stacked top five coming up here and cook gonna try to use this uh, delaware style restart to his advantage as you know steve cox doesn't want to see quentin borison outside of him borison's giving him fits this season yeah stelts putting the bumper to borison that's going to cut the tire on the 36 not sure if it's already oh. punctured or what but tough break for stelts there that's not that's not how you want to see the good race for Amanda. as he had a claw back from that penalty but up front, it is Keith Cook with still a complete rear bumper full of Steve Cox. Now, it's a good thing that uh, Cox's bumper is black. They're not trading any actual different colors of paint there. More Steve Cox than he can handle, although he has handled it quite nicely so far. And time is running out for the 32 as Cook just continues to click him off. Yeah, Quentin Borison just hanging out, waiting for just one mistake from either of these drivers, or he might just go up there and force a mistake from them and give Steve Cox a little bit of a bump. Well, if Cox can get side by side with Cook at some point in time, Borison then just has to pick his lane and he might get a free spot. Although, again, we're down to just a couple, a handful of laps here. And Cook has not wavered. No, and he is getting definitely a lot of action from Steve Cox behind. Uh, I think Steve is doing about everything except wrecking him at this point because uh, he's been hit quite a few times throughout the course of this race. So I believe we just have about two or three laps remaining. Just a little bit of a rub. That's okay. Quote a famous movie, Rubbin's Racing Son. As they make their way through the turn and Cook just consistent, coming off at the same point, hitting his acceleration points. Not going to have to worry about the intersection much, if at all, here mm -hmm. over these last few. Steve Cox is still putting the bumper to him, but now Quentin Borson's right there as well. And here comes Mike Stellis. He's going to play the lap down card and give a little bit of more action there. As I think that was probably the most upset we've seen the 11 car this entire race was going around South Pole right there. He'll make it into the North Pole, come around the corners. No white flag yet. It should be any time now. As Cox, Borison, you can see how fast Stelz is. Stelz has uh, kept up quite nicely, even though he's laps down now. So that fourth car in line is not actually battling mm -hmm. for position, but you can see the speed that it has. 
As Quentin Borson really closing in that gap for second now, giving a ton of pressure to the 32 of Steve Cox as they're still battling hard for this race lead. It's just a matter of inches for, for one of them to make a mistake. And it's going to be a completely different race. We're starting to catch some possible intersection action there as Keith Cook has just been so impressive this entire race, just doing a phenomenal job keeping the two very fast podium cars behind him because we've seen Cox and Borson on the podium plenty this year as we're going to go right here in the chase drone. All right, taking a look at it through the intersection, it is Cook coming in through the North Pole off that turn, and there's the white flag. So Cook's just got to make one more circuit through here. And that's going to be tough with Steve Cox all over that back bumper. You see Cox getting really loose. Oh, he had to overcorrect and lose momentum. Or else he would have nailed that uke tire. That might be all Keith Cook needed as around the North Pole one last time. Keith Cook is your Monroe Groceriales Super Stock Figure 8 main event winner. Steve Cox in second and Quinn Boris in the one arm bandit in third. Then Mackenzie Dietz with the last minute switch into a different car comes home four. So was able to salvage some good points there for Dietz's. What a awesome race and a great win for Keith Cook. Oh, what a cool view off the drone as well as here we go. Victory Donuts, baby. Kyle Larson would be proud. <laughs> Smoke show there from the 11 of Keith Cook. And we have even more action coming up. More figure eights. The Outlaw figure eights coming up after this timeout on Home Track Heroes and the CW11.